Six seed is digging too deep. What about four seed? That looks much better. That is pretty much how we would want it to be. Boys and girls, ladies and gents, my name is Aram and this is the Aram Training Channel, the competitive rowing channel. This video reached me from Belgium. It's a student team. They prepare for a uh, championship in the mixed eight. It's their main boat and they take it quite seriously. So they sent me uh, a message. They actually did some follow-up work because I asked them about, hey, what is your pelvic mobility? So they rated their own pelvic mobility. Um, they sent me their ERG scores, but I don't think ERG scores are that relevant for rowing. Um, and they want my opinion on how they can improve. Whenever I look at the boat and I want to see what we can change and what can be done better, I will look at the total aid and look at the individual inefficiencies. And then I will look at the placement. So who's positioned where? The way to have positioned it now is that the four guys are in the midship and they are stronger than the girls. And uh, the four girls are spread out. So we got two in stroke and two in bow. So the, I, I get the general idea. The strong guys are the powerhouse um, in, in the middle of the boat. And we got the stern pair for rhythm and we got the bow pair for stability. I totally get that. So the girls give the, provide the rhythm and the guys support whatever they get. Makes sense and doesn't make sense to a certain degree. The thing is um, that you have to be able to support a certain stroke style that suits you. And it's always better if the stronger guys provide the stroke structure, not the weaker um, athletes in a boat. But let's, let's, let's go point by point. Let's look at the individual efficiencies and inefficiencies. The first thing when we talk about efficiency is the catch. The catch consists of multiple points, it's like a checklist. And the first point on that checklist is the vertical placement of the blade. How do I want that to happen? So imagine my hand were a blade and the other hand is the water surface. And I'm just recapping, if, if you've been watching all of my videos, it's going to be boring because I repeat what I've said in the last couple of videos. But it's one of the most essential things people don't get right. Um, you will see what I mean in a moment. That's the water level, that's the blade. You want to catch the water. First of all, do we want the blade to go through the water or do we want to hold on to the water as much as possible and propel the boat? My humble opinion, the latter is the case. Why? because water has greater inertia than the boat going through the water. So logically, we want to hold on to the water. That's also why these blades are not shaped um, like, uh, are not shaped with holes in them, but they're shaped almost like a shovel. So we create a higher pressure difference, and therefore we have a higher propulsion efficiency. So in other words, the blade locks on better to the water. Okay, so that's also why rowing tanks suck and don't work, because it's utopious to believe we can reverse physical principles now that and we try to accelerate water in a, in, a, in a rowing tank. It will never ever replace the true motion and therefore everything you learn there is almost impossible to be transferred into the boat because the dynamics of motion and the muscles and in which way you need to trigger the muscles are wrong. So this is why it is more effective and yes I'm talking from my own product is to, to work on a bio row with full blades if you want. Next up. Once the placement is done, so I'm talking about the vertical placement of the blade, the question is how do we want that to be achieved? Do we want the deep catch? Do we want the shallow catch? Do we want the precise catch? Of course, a precise catch. Now what is a precise catch? Imagine, um, if you haven't seen my shorts and, and, and the video explaining that. Go into a comfortable position at the finish. And now you square your blades and you let them rest in the water where, where they would naturally rest. Just make sure your boat is stable. Don't interfere vertically, as, as little as possible vertical interference. You see there's just the top edge of the blade out of the water, the rest is in the water. Okay, Jakob, do the same thing please at half slide. Okay, and now do a gentle pull. Okay. Ideal, thank you. Go to the catch position or any position you want. Drop your blade in the water, let it rest. Don't interfere with it vertically. If the boat is stabilized, the top surface of the blade will stick out that much, okay? Almost nothing. And the moment you start to apply force, it will just go just underneath the water surface with the top edge of the blade. Why is this happening? Because it's designed to do that. Now, the problem is that many, keep, many people catch in a way where they drop the blade into the catch position, it bounces back up. Every time you have vertical motion, we cannot lock onto the water. So we will create slip. 
The slip is the last thing we want. So the, the blade slips through the water. We don't want slip. We want to hold on to something solid. Imagine you sit on a skateboard and you want to reverse yourself on the concrete. Well, do, do you want your hands to go pop, 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 slip over the concrete? No, it's going to hurt. And in a boat it will not hurt, but it will not be fast. So if you want to be sure that a precise catch is a catch where you just place your blade in a way where it as quickly as possible rests vertically, where it would naturally rest if it didn't interfere with it vertically. If you want to be sure that this is true, check out Ricardo Cardoso's study of the University of Porto. He did a study on Randall foils. Wanted to find out are these things actually as fast as they promise to be. Remember, Randall foils make you about 3 to 10% faster. I don't know how many percent he concluded, but it was substantial. You have to keep in, <laughs> keep in mind that switching from an old single skull to a new single skull, what you get at most is 1% speed increase. If you switch to, from no Randall foils to Randall foils, 3% speed increase. A new Empire sells around 16,000 16, euros, including tax now in Europe. Um, a pair of Randall foils sells for $120. 1%, 3%. Okay, I don't think I have to mention anything further. The next step, once the vertical placement is done, we then can start to lock on horizontally. In real life, it's going to be a wash in. So essentially the blade goes in and in and, and shouldn't go deep and up. I know um, my dry steel wrote that style. The question is how fast would he have been had he learned that rowing technique a different way? Now he was Olympic champion, one of the fastest single scholars we've ever had. The question is, not how fast was he in comparison to others, but how fast was he in comparison to what he could have been? That's the more relevant question to ask. So I'm looking at the blades. How quickly are these vertically stabilized? A uh, good example is six seat here. Six seat is the strongest guy in the boat. And you see his oar, his blade goes deep, 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 deep. Now it's starting to stabilize vertically. That's the first time he's fully locked in the water. That is the first time he can unfold his entire power potential. Now on the erg, that doesn't matter because on the erg you're fast because you pull on a chain. In a real boat environment, that is a lot different. Why? Because we're going perpendicular. We're going around or locks. And the thing is that many people who are fast on the erg are not good on the water because it doesn't tell you how you apply the physical potential. A linear erg is a, is a deadlift with a very bad execution to do for, I don't know, 250 strokes on a 2K. That's a linear erg. A linear erg does not tell you, are you, is it relevant that your hands are vertically stabilized? No, it is not. You just pull on a bar that's mounted to a chain. Um, and I, I don't name any manufacturer. What surprises me is that there are so many manufacturers banging their heads over linear ergs and another linear erg instead of doing something that we did with Firebower. Just get the real rowing motion into the market. I don't understand why we need to bring more linear ergs into the market just because we can make more profit. Why don't you, why don't you focus on building something that makes sense, that we need? I had to start this with no money and no experience and no investors and nothing because my back was done from erging. It can't be that there are so, so few visionaries out there. And the thing is, and that's also recently I got asked, hey, would you like to take on investors for buy row? No, I don't. No, no, I don't. If you haven't suffered the same risk and haven't suffered the same kind of <clears throat> hardship and insecurity for almost two decades, you have no clue. You have no clue. And therefore, your heart will never be the same, <laughs> never be hooked the same way to an idea and a vision. It will just be another business. And I don't need that. Let's move on. I look for the placement. The placement is relevant. If you can control your hands vertically, you're good. On a bar rower, if you didn't control your hands vertically, you would have a play at the catch. Why? Because you add horizontal, a vertical motion when you want to connect horizontally. And there is no vertical resistance on a bar rower. The vertical resistance you perceive here in the boat is ineffective. It doesn't propel the boat at all. Um, it creates a lot of slip and actually breaks the boat because you bring the entire shaft into the water. And the idea that you just hook the blade better it's the same water. It is the same water on the top and almost the same on the top and on the bottom. The thing is, you just need to calm down and, and stabilize that blade vertically. The quicker this is done, the quicker you connect. And if you need to cover a half a meter, some people do that, before you can finally get that blade to a vertical rest, it's a waste of time. 
We don't have that much time at the kitchen. We just don't. If, I hope this makes any sense. So who, who's doing this? Six seed is digging too deep. What about four seed? That looks much better. That is pretty much how we'd want it to be. Exactly, where my cursor is. Right there. What about stroke? Excellent. That's pretty good. I would say stroke and four, you guys are awesome. All right, what about two? Yeah, looks fine. A bit, the, a bit on the deep side. You see the difference here. See more of the shaft is buried in here. But otherwise, that's good. That's good stuff. That's really good work. Okay, good. Let's look at the other side. Don't have a really good shot of the other side. No, that's 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 a stern four from the other side. A different recording. Look at seven. No, seven is going too deep. Yeah, seven is going too deep. I think, way too deep. Do we see five? No. No video five. So that's bow. I can't talk about bow. I don't see much of the bay work there. It seems to be okay. What about three? He's right here. Yeah. That's good work. Okay, that seems to be okay. So we have no real footage of five and not good footage of bow. The next thing I'd be looking for is how do you get your blades closer to the water? Do you do this with an upper body rotation or do you do this with just lifting your arm? And I think you should do it by just raising your arm, not changing the entire upper body angle. Why? Two reasons. If you have to get, <laughs> if you have to bring your upper body up in order to get your blades into the water, there is insufficient stability um, here in your low torso. Why do I say this? Because most of the time this happens when people try to reach forward by bringing the entire upper body forward. If you bring the entire upper body forward, you put a lot of weight on your hands. Now, how do you get rid of that weight on your hand when actually you want to raise the hand you just put a lot of weight on? That's counterproductive, you see? It's, it's contradictory. So you solve this in a way by just getting the upper body back up. So it's, it's a polite bow at the catch that has nothing to do with boat speed. It doesn't make you any faster. The second thing is that if you bring your upper body up just to get the blades into the water, you have, you, you're engaging more of the deltoids not the lat, but you need the latissimus dorsi because that's the muscle we use, that's the biggest muscle we have available to transfer energy through the trunk, besides all the you know internal stability muscles. The thing is, the, the trunk is deprived of bones. What do we have? The sternum, the rib cage, which breaks when you sneeze with some people, and we got, we got the spine, which is so weak you need to support it all the time. There is no uh, there is no complete bone structure as we have it from knee to hip for example, or from ankle to knee, or you know, from elbow to hand to wrist. There, there, there isn't much. So we have to use the, all the muscles we have to transfer force. You know, look at the body. Let's say there's bones from feet to knee to hip joint, not much for, to your arm, to your shoulders. Your shoulders are not connected to the trunk through bones. And then from the shoulder to the elbow to the wrist, we have bones again. You see the disadvantage? We have to use the biggest muscles we have, not the small ones. The deltoids are pretty small. Lat dorsi, huge. So of course we're going to predominantly use the big muscles, not the small ones. So of course what we do right now is here at the catch, if you, if you bring your upper body up, you have to have a lot of tension here, which means you cannot be in that nice stretch forward. You see this? This is a lat, that nice stretch forward position. We, we're going to go up and that's the problem. And the third problem, of course, is you waste a lot of that upper body pivot potential. The original rowing motion is upper body rotation around the hip joint with a bit of arm pull. That derives from upper body weight again. The thing is that the, the reason why we have that, these, these slides is so that we can actually uh, have a bit of a pre-acceleration of the boat before we do the upper body swing, which is the original rowing motion. Now, if we do the original rowing motion at the beginning of the stroke, which is much stronger, much more effective, because there's weight behind it than the leg drive, we're done with the stroke. And one thing in addition, if we do the upper body swing early at the catch, we cannot control the blade depth as well as we could when we did a loose connection where we just lengthen out our hands and arms. I don't say you should lengthen out the shoulders indefinitely because they need to be protected as well. And Another remark on that, um, there are people 
who can have a very nice blade placement with an upper body rotation going up, but they waste their upper body pivot potential, they engage the wrong muscles, as just explained before, and in a high stroke rate environment, <laughs> their blades will dig deep because you cannot control this when you do a full stroke cycle every two seconds or less, okay? So, so much said about this. So the next thing I've been looking for, who's, who's pivoting with the upper body in order to get the blade into the water? Stroke seems to be doing all right, right here. What about seven? Uh-huh, seems to be okay. Her outside shoulder goes up a bit, so the lat is not engaged as much, as much as it should be. So she has an issue with force transfer. Might not be the ideal position in seven, where you actually have to support everything stroke does. Stroke's responsibility is rhythm. Seven should support the rhythm from stroke. And the, the midship should start to um, enforce what's, what the stroke pair does. But stroke pair needs to be... <laughs> you, in six seat, you want to feel what's going on in stroke. You don't have to have the most powerful people in stroke, but you have to have people who are connected. They, you should sense that. When you're in six seat or five, you just want to feel what's going on. Okay? So I'm not sure if, if, if seven should sit where she's sitting. I don't mean to be personal, but hey, this is not about, you know, selling roses. I'm, I, I just want to be straight on a, on a point and help you to go as fast as you can and interchange possibly a, a few positions. Good. Six seat, tremendously powerful, but needs to bring the upper body into the equation just to get the blade into the water. That is actually one of the good strokes, I think. So six seat is shooting the slide, the seat goes out, it's, it's barely visible in this video, but I'm in front of that screen, I can see this right now. Seat moves out a bit, back becomes a bit round, and now he's picking up the upper body the moment the load hits him. So you're overwhelming yourself. You're going too hard with your legs before your blade is even connected. You're powerful, but you're wrecking yourself and you might have back pain in the future. Make sure you place your blade more precisely, raise your arm to place the blade, and use your legs cautiously at the beginning and connect horizontally. And once you have the full connection, then you can floor your legs. Then you can use all the power you've got, but you're not precise enough at the catch, therefore you miss at least a third of your drive. Okay, five seat, opposite side. That's excellent. That's a very, very good way. See this? You see the shoulder blades going forward. That is pretty much how it would want it to, to be. That is pretty much the precision I, I've been looking for. Okay, four seed. Ah, wonderful. That's also very good. So five and four, um, very, very good technical work here. What about three? Yeah. A bit wobbly at the catch. You can just look at the um, the quick contraction just when the blade hits the water. Now, you see this is a uh, bit of shoulder rotation, but it is still okay. It is it is on a good side. It's definitely on the good side, and I think it helps three C to be behind four C because four is so good. So I'd say four, five, four, and three. That's the technical stability. That's the technical backbone of this boat. Okay, what about two? I two yeah two you're raising your shoulders too much. You're not engaging your lats sufficiently. So you're going up with your shoulders. That means you're performing the motion nicely, but you're not connected. There's not much resistance on your blade. So you could move the boat much more if you just lengthen out your shoulders and try to keep it low. I'm mostly, in sweep, I'm mostly referring to the outside shoulder and the inside shoulder will adapt as it becomes more flexible. Bow, ooh, uh, look at that very precisely. I hope you can see this. Before the blade hits the water, which you can't see, but you can estimate when. Look at the seat, it seems to be moving out. Now, there's a change in the angle. Now, okay. However, what she does extremely well is she has the lat engaged. The shoulders do appear high as well, but I perceive to see that the lat is engaged a bit more. You may disagree with me and say, oh, I can't see this. I spend a lot of time every single day to look specifically at these things. And the one thing that tells me the most is a, a change in body tension and which muscles are stretched out. And because I've tried so many different rowing techniques and rowed so many rowing styles, um, I, when I look at something, I feel what's going on. If, if you sit on a bi rower and you have a camera on the side and a screen in front of you and you see yourself from the side and you see in another screen the force curves and you just play with this Game Boy setup, then you get a good idea of 
which kind of technique creates which kind of force curves, how long you can hold these force curves, what happens at a stroke at 16, 18, 20, 24, 30, and 40. And what happens on a second 1000 when you're completely in lactate nirvana and you don't know how to survive. You get a good idea. It's, it's an immediate response system. And I played with this. I played with this for more than 20 years now. So it teaches me a lot. So for me, the top picks, the most consistent rowers in this team are definitely one, three, four, five, and possibly stroke. The rowers with connection issues are seven, six, and two. I know who would have the physical capacity. The physical capacity in theory, that person. But he cannot apply it because he just can apply it on the erg, but not in a boat. That's a different motion. It requires different muscles to be fast in the erg than in a boat. So we need to put six somewhere where he can mimic somebody else. Two is actually in a good spot because you can, I think two's technique, I, I don't know the history of her, but I think just because she sits behind three and three's so good, I'm pretty sure she benefits a lot. So she, I think she's nicely packed in there. Bow is super stable. I understand why she's bow. That's, that's a very good idea. Now in an eight, if you have um, a pure man's aid or woman's aid, you can now play around. You say, okay, you've got people with technique deficiencies. Then I personally like to do a tandem rig, um, a double tandem rig. Um, why do we do this? Because then you force somebody who's technically not as sound to be in sync with somebody who's technically very much sound. So I put the, 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 the technically more proficient person in front of the technically weaker person. What this creates is um, synchronicity in force curves and thus a better rhythm. That's one of the tricks you can use in aids. And I like to do this especially with novice aids or aids who are not as experienced as this one. So what can we do now? And now it's my humble guesswork. First of all, um, I think everybody in the boat should be a master, A, at overhead deep squats. You don't need to use a lot of weight, but you should be very good at overhead deep squats with a 20 kilo bar. Um, maybe the guys with a 40 kilo bar, a 40 kilo, um, so, you know, two 10 kilo plates on each side, and the girls with 20 kilos. You should be able to do this at least eight reps. Don't do a lot of reps because it's not going to, get good in, not going to be good on your shoulders, but um, be good at that with a few reps. Uh, be very good in good mornings. Do a couple reverse hyper extensions. Um, that's actually what I'm going to use for my team watching that. I'm going to do reverse hyper extensions as part of the daily training routine now or the weekly training routine at the training plans starting this fall. So for my team, um, if you want to join, go to rmtraining.com. New season is about to start for the Northern Hemisphere. If, it's, if you join now, you have a full cycle before we peak um, in spring and then in fall again. Okay. And make sure you practice uh, Romanian deadlifts. These are the most important strength exercises. The front squat as well, but that's a different video topic, which strength exercises are the best for rowing. I've done a video on that, but not as specifically as I would want it to be. So I might repeat this again. If you're interested, just let me know, put it in the comments below. I'm, I'm happy to cover that. Recording, recording. Okay, now how would I play around? There are a couple options. Option number one, um, the problem is that a stroke pair doesn't pick up the rhythm as it should. So we've got two options. We could, use, we, we could put bow um, in seven seat. I think that would help the entire bow to pick up a better rhythm. I would put three seat in bow, seven seat in three. I would switch out four and six. So what, what do we achieve with this? Um, four is very quick in connecting. So then we have three very quick connectors here at the catch, uh, in, in, in stroke. So eight, seven, and six are very quick to connect. Five is very quick to connect. So the entire stern four provides a rhythm that is quick and also strong. Um, then we have in four, the current six guy. Six guy doesn't connect as quickly, but as powerful as a horse. And we would have a guy again in bow being very stable in the connection process and synchronize that a bit. So this is something I could change. The other option would be to say, okay, we're going to split and do the following thing. We're going to put um, three and four 
and reverse positions in stroke. And put the stroke pair in reverse positions in three and four. That would have a stronger stability in the rhythm and it would also allow you to, um, for the rest of the team to follow. Because now you're generating a very strong rhythm that has a very loose and quick connection, but a longer plateau and a force curve. That's just my humble opinion. I wouldn't necessarily keep this up forever, but at least for a while. And now my tandem break options. It would probably make sense to put um, seven seat tandem with bow seat. How do we do this? It, we could do it in a way where we put the current bow girl in seven, tandem rig six to be star as well, and have current seven switch to six, which is then star. So we have port, star, star. I would put the current four then in five, which would be port, and I would put five seed in bow. So five seed comes to bow, and then we would have two stroke sides here in the midship. And I would switch positions. I would switch current six seed to sit behind current four seed here in the midship. Does it make sense for you guys? That would create a very good rhythm. There are many more things you could play around with. So if I were coaching your boat, I would play with these tandem rig options and see how do we get the best rhythm. And it's the most important thing is to have an, have an excellent force curve transfer throughout the boat. Yeah, there's so many more things you can play with, but I want to keep this video short. I said it's already recording for 29 minutes, for 29 minutes and 6 seconds. If you want to work with me, rmtraining.com is the website. Um, go to rowing.zone to connect with me. This is the social network I'm creating for rowers. And any bi rower um, classified ad where we sell bi rower demos, right now I think six bi rower pro demos almost new for a very good price on rowing.zone. This is the place to be if you want to get good offers. And if you want to place your classified ad there, you can do it for free. If you want to learn more about the bi rower, it's byrower.com. The Randall Foils are randallfoils.com and the arm is armtraining.com. Thank you for subscribing. If you don't subscribe and hit the notification bell, you will not know when I put out a new video. I'm looking forward to seeing the next one then. All the best and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.